Join me now to discuss attorney at the Bianchi Law Group, LLC, David Bruno. David, thank you so much for joining me. So David, I, I guess I wasn't expecting to, to see the Petito family slap the laundry family with a lawsuit here, and uh, it, they are making some interesting claims. I haven't really seen the evidence, but I've read the articles uh, about uh, w what claims that they're making. Yeah, well, first and foremost, the complaint has a lot of speculation in it. I mean, in every single critical and material paragraph to link the parents to the killer, um, they say, we believe, we believe, we believe, and that's not gonna get it. It does put the, the parents in a particular situation with depositions and they have to go under oath and they have to give interrogatories and under oath statements, et cetera. But at the same time, uh, Brian Laundrie is dead. So I would think that that's the smoking gun as to what he told the parents. Now, there's no privilege that goes with parent, child, believe it or not. Whatever the, the laundry parents told their attorney is going to be privileged, can't be pierced in this litigation. Um, but on the other hand, if they were asked questions about what Brian told them, they would not have a privilege to stand behind, other than potentially the Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. And that doesn't necessarily apply in the civil case. They can get adverse inferences if they invoke the fifth. But this is going to be dealt with in depositions and interrogatories, probably the Laudry's worst nightmare that they're going to now go under oath and have to answer some very difficult questions about what they know, what they, what they knew, what they did, and why they did it. David, I'm sure, uh, I don't know how you reacted to this, and maybe the parents did the right thing by not speaking. Legally speaking, they did the right thing. But for, as an outsider and somebody covering the story, it would just they seemed so cold, and it was so bizarre on, on how they acted during the search. And uh, you know, you'd think that they would be more involved, especially considering that Gabby lived in their home for some time. It's not like she was a stranger to them. Sure, agreed. But listen, the public perception is different than constitutional legal rights that individuals get and exercise, right? So the lawyer, I would imagine, the lawyer was giving them the advice to stay quiet, to remain silent, because they didn't know, and especially if they didn't know where their son was, where Gabby was, where they were going. And even if they did, they invoked their rights and they had that right, that constitutional right to remain silent. So long as they didn't do two things, they didn't obstruct their son's apprehension by helping him get away. Uh, there's some allegations in the complaint that they did that, but I'll wait for the evidence to determine whether or not that's factually accurate. Or if they lied to investigators. That's where I really think the peril would be for the parents, whether or not they obstructed justice, uh, tried to get him away, or lied to investigators. Uh, well, I mean, all of this uh, is still not going to bring back Gabby, so I would imagine it's still a very painful time for the parents, but I'm sure that they want some answers to these questions uh, that they probably uh, think about every single day. Now, I want to shift gears here and talk about Jesse Smollett. Apparently, he's been put into the psych ward in that Chicago jail. Uh, just last week, we were talking about his outburst after uh, he was sentenced. He was talking about how he's not suicidal. He's not suicidal. It was quite the show. Uh, he also still... Uh, claims that he's innocent. There's a lot going on with Smollett. So why would they move him to the psych ward? Yeah, he, he received a 15-month sentence on this, and, and he started out segregated, right? So it's almost like a natural evolution from segregation into the psych ward because he was separated, and he wouldn't have been getting out of his cell. He wouldn't have regular contact with individuals for his protection. And because he was segregated, uh, that starts to have a slippery slope for an individual's mental state. And it could have been that he was had mental health issues before he went in. But I assure you that segregation, being alone, not having human contact, does nothing to help anybody's mental health issue. And that potentially could be the issue as to why he is suicidal at this point, even if he wasn't suicidal at the time of the outburst, which I had critical comments about myself. I, I noticed the attorney grabbing him when he started to make those sort of comments in front of the judge, the sentencing judge, and I would have done the same thing because you, you're, you're in front of the court asking for forgiveness or even remorse, and he had everything but remorse on that day. 
when he started to speak out. And then just to be clear, so he, he was moved into the psych ward and then now he's moved out of the psych ward according uh, to the latest news reports. I wanted to be clear on that. Uh, it was just interesting, all of the, the shuffling back and forth. And then I'm seeing some of his allies in the, in the media in Hollywood suggesting that the punishment is too harsh. Uh, I would disagree. Think of all the pain that he caused and the division that he caused in this country with this fake hate crime against himself. I mean, it's just insane. I've been on your program talking about this before the sentence, and I said he's going to get jail, and he should get jail. I mean, look, there is one deterrence out there for, for people that can't use the system in this way. And just because he didn't have a criminal history at the time of sentence doesn't mean that's the only factor that goes into the consideration of an appropriate sentence. And it's not only that he had a prior no criminal history, but he got on that stand and arguably lied under oath. He led the police down a wild goose chase. This made public uh, news accounts. It was political. He made it political. And there's every reason to deter this conduct and everything to support a custodial sentence that he received from this court. Yeah, David, I, I mean, I really think that he deserves the punishment. And ag again, he wasted uh, the time of police officers. He divided this country. He tried to slander Trump supporters. And if you can't do the time, then don't do the crime. Uh, now, I wanted to get to this, the use of public figures in parody. We've seen uh, a lot of interesting characters, people doing cartoons of, of President Biden. Is this legal? Yeah, what we're talking about is uh, really NFTs, uh, non-fungible tokens, and there's something coming out, a sleepy Joe Biden uh, NFT. And, and many are asking, you know, is this legal in the context? And look, there's, there's history behind uh, the parody and the use, the comical use of public figures and cartoons. I think issue number one would be, number one, is it a real copyright written image, which it's not? These things are, are uh, digitally made and they're not Joe Biden actually. And the second question is, is this defamation or libel? And, and the history and the common law and the case law behind this is it needs malice for defamation. And it's especially not malice when there's humor behind it, when it's for uh, humorous reasons. And that's what this is. Uh, these things are hilarious. NFTs have taken this world by storm, and I'm sure many of them, many people have seen these things, but this is something that's coming out about Sleepy Joe, and I'd imagine it picks up some steam once it goes public. Yeah, uh, we're looking at them. I'm kind of laughing at the screen over here. And NFTs, it's a, it's a relatively new concept. Like, I'm not super familiar with it, uh, but I know that there are, are a lot of people that are very into it. They're spending a lot of money on NFTs, so I'm sure it, uh, it's a trend that will continue to grow. Well, David, we got to oh, leave it here. Thank you so much. You got it. Steph. Good to see you as always. Great to see you. Coming up next, a stock.